The Magic Castle is an exclusive club run by the Academy of Magical Arts, where only their members and guests are allowed in. Founded in 1963, the Magic Castle looms over Hollywood. It's pretty hard to miss. I've been curious about the Magic Castle since I moved here, and doing research turns out it's incredibly exclusive. There's really only two ways to get in. Be a member, or get an invite from a member. We are a private club, uh, very similar to a country club or yacht club. We just deal with the art of magic. I got an exclusive tour of the castle, which in addition to the many bars, magic theaters, and full dining area, it also features a seance room, a library filled with decades of secret magic tricks, and even ghosts. This is one of the most exclusive clubs in Los Angeles, and they have been nice enough to let us in early to show us all the ins and outs of this really great place. For starters, to get into this place, you have to enter through a trick bookshelf. So you say to the owl, open sesame. We want to do the honors? Open sesame. <laughs> Come on in. Wow. After you. Cool. <laughs> Magician and mentalist R. Max Goodwin was nice enough to give us a tour. So this is the main bar, and at any given night, from let's say five to midnight, this place is packed with magicians and their guests, and people are here to see incredible magic in a bunch of different showrooms, have dinner, have drinks, have a good time. Oh, did you notice everyone is dressed up? The Magic Castle has an incredibly strict dress code. I'm the kind of guy, if you see me in a suit, I'm either on my way to a funeral or court. But with the Magic Castle, they have a strict dress code, no exceptions. So now we're going to uh, enter the close-up gallery of the Magic Castle, which is a really unique theater. It's an intimate setting, seats only 30 people. It's a really interactive space where you can see magic really close up. What type of magic is best for a room like this? So I would say close-up magic, and close-up magic is defined in the magic community as magic that breaks the fourth wall. Can I put you on the spot right now and show us a Oh, trick? yeah, sure, of course. No. Yes. Normally, if you see a magician, they would say something like, pick a card, right? That's okay. the classic thing mm -hmm. that you're expecting. I just want you to name one. Oh. Any card you want. No way. I'm already like, no way cards. this is going to happen. Uh, like. Jack of spades. Jack of spades. Okay. And why don't you hold out a hand palm up? Perfect. So we will use something like, all right, we have a queen here. All right, right? That queen wasn't of. My card. That's okay. We're getting there. Start We're getting over. There. Uh, Queen of Dimes, so hold out your hand like this, Mo. Thank we you. said Jack of Spades? Yeah. Okay. I already Jack of Spades, all right. Uh -huh. So obviously you could have said something like a three, right? Watch this. That's it. It's done. What's it? Get the f <laughs> What the hell? What the hell? <laughs> Were we able to see how you did that? Because you just filmed that. Like, if we go back, we'll see, like... You cannot you can't do see that. Anything. <laughs> what can I do what? You can't tell magician secrets. No, I'm just saying we filmed it. So like if I'm watching the video, oh, like it's slow motion. Yeah. Okay. Do you want to name one? Any card you'd like. Fifty-two cards. Do you remember the cards? Yeah, I do remember. Don't the card. come up with like Queen of Jacks or something. <laughs> okay, okay. Actually, uh, I'll go the uh, Eight of Hearts. Eight of Hearts. And did you feel like that was a free choice, or did I kind of make you say that? Or? You didn't make me say. But I'm working hard to pick a card that I don't think you think I'm thinking. Oh, okay. So maybe there was some reverse psychology, though. I said eight of hearts? Eight of hearts. Yeah. So the reason I'm asking is that the eight of hearts is the one card I always leave in the box. <laughs> 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 Sorry. What the, the f card in the box. Dude! <laughs> what the hell? I'm like... <laughs> Don't worry, it wears off in like a week feel, or so. I don't know if I feel comfortable being with this guy anymore. This is weird. Like, uh... Like later, he's just gonna be like, he's gonna like my watch is gonna appear in his wrist or something. Like <laughs> I'm keeping my eye on my wall for the rest of this thing. Next, we went to one of my favorite rooms in the castle, the Harry Houdini Seance Chamber. Houdini was the best. Uh, he really defined what magic is today, and this was back in the the twenties. Uh, he passed away on October thirty first, nineteen twenty six, and he's still known as the greatest magician of all. Back there, we've got uh, one of the trunks that he would escape out of. Houdini was obsessed with seances, attempting to reach his mother in the afterlife. We do the Houdini seance experience inside that room. Uh, it is our only private dining space that we have here at the castle. Uh, it is a very sacred room, a coveted room, so to speak. 
when Houdini was famous, there was a, a couple other magicians who were dueling at the time, one of whom was Dante. And Houdini and Dante uh, had a big rivalry, almost like a Hollywood rivalry, where they absolutely hated each other. And so we have another room here at the castle, uh, part of the dining area, that's called the Dante Room, right? So when there was a fire here, maybe six or seven years ago, um, parts of the castle were absolutely destroyed, or not destroyed, but were damaged. That was the Dante Room. This room, though, the Houdini seance room, was completely spared. And what's really interesting is that Houdini died on Halloween, mm -hmm. right? And the fire happened on Halloween. So some people speculate that maybe the ghosts or, I don't know, somebody involved in Houdini's past may have spared Houdini's room. And just to spite Dante, said, yeah, let's, let's, let's burn that little area down. <laughs> Quick epilogue. After this, we went to the Dante room and I had a little fun at his expense. Look at, look at this journal. There he is. Smile. There he is. And, uh, yeah. and makes, so, me, makes me want to set this room on fire. <laughs> anyway, later that night, we had dinner in the Dante room, and it was great. I got a little bit carried away, and when the bill came, it was like 250 bucks. It was like Dante was staring down at me as if to say, who looks like the jerk now? Me. Uh, this video is a little too anti-Dante, and I feel bad about it. <laughs> All right? I'm sure he's a good dude. Yeah, who knows? Maybe he'll end up doing something to you. Yeah, oh, yeah. <laughs> the castle has several bars. My favorite is the Owl Bar. Name so for the fortune-telling owl perched above. Uh, Archimedes will answer questions of both members and guests at any time. Guests of the Magic Castle have several magic shows to choose from, and they go pretty much all night. Small rooms, big rooms, magic at the bar, you're pretty much surrounded by amazing magic all night. The most secretive part of the Magic Castle is their library of magic. Which, of course, I was not let in. Oh, Sorry. We have books in our library dating back to 1786 that show exactly how magic is done. That library is probably the best magic library in the world. The library is the one area that we'd like to continue to think of as sacred ground. And this is the library, right? <clears throat> do, you want, do you want to check the handle, see if it's unlocked? Let's give it a shot. Can you work magic on it? Yeah. No. I think when you come here and you are amazed by our professionals that we have in here on a week-to-week -week basis, it takes you back to that first magic trick that you saw at whatever age it was. It was that sense of bewilderment. And I think in today's world, in today's society, we need a little bit more of that.